My dad bought a cine camera in the late 1920s. I think it was the first model that the French Pathé Company made for amateur use. And 16 pictures every second may have seemed a better deal than the eight small prints you got from a roll of film in his dad's Kodak number no. one folding camera. I still have both of them, although I haven't used them lately. These are the first cine pictures that he took with it. It's my mum gathering flowers in her dad's garden in Bredbury Green, Romilly in 1928 and looking very embarrassed at being filmed. He puts in a brief appearance at the end of the clip. Now it's three years later and my brother Geoffrey has arrived on the scene. Mum is taking him to visit her friend Nora and she's camera shy too. Nora's father is my dad's employer. They live in a big house across the road on Bribery Green with a badminton court in the garden. Meanwhile, Dad's spending some quality time with his new son. While his boss prunes roses in his best gardening gear. And here's Jeff again, nine months old, and sitting on our lawn in the company of a ball and a stuffed animal. Jeff can throw a ball straight, but he's not too good at catching it yet. But at least he knows roughly where it went. It's July 1933 and the family are on holiday in Scarborough. Jeff's now 15 months old and he's paddling in the sea with his mum and dad in his trendy one-piece bathing suit. A donkey ride, that's always fun and a good photo opportunity. This clip might be recording Jeff's first unassisted steps. He certainly looks chuffed at having gone solo. I played on this rocking horse later on as well. I remember its mane was getting a bit threadbare, but it obviously came from pedigree stock. Dad took a whole reel of this, Another year has gone by, it's summer 1934 and they're back on the beach in Scarborough. This year, Jeff's wearing a stylish little off-the-shoulder number. This is the lake in Scarborough's Peace Home Park. Maybe they put the performers on those rafts in case the audience turns hostile. And now it's 1935 and we're on Blackpool Promenade. The vintage year because I'm about to put in an appearance. 
so Dad and Jeff are being packed off to the seaside while I make my debut. This is Nurse Hilton, the midwife who delivered me. She apparently did the laundry as well. Here she's introducing me to Geoffrey. He doesn't realise it yet, but life will never be the same again. From now on, he's only going to get half the attention and he'll have to share his train set too. It's April 1936. I'm eight months old and Jeff's just four. And very smartly turned out. Just look at those shoes. Another year later, and we're playing on Blackpool Beach with our cousin Margaret. And I've now inherited the sexy swimsuit. Uncle Fred, Dad's brother, lived on Watson Road which in those days passed right through the centre of the Pleasure Beach on its way to the seashore. So on the way back there, we often begged for a ride on the roundabouts or the little train. We went on holiday to St Anne's in 1937 and again the following year. We're in a little park on the seafront here and I'm in my pram being wheeled by mum through a little grotto behind a waterfall whilst Dad filmed us from the other side of the pool. I was then just two years old and this is actually my first memory. Passing behind that curtain of water and being absolutely fascinated by it. These stepping stones really need traffic lights and a one-way system. We're on the beach at St Anne's. The people passing in the background look like they're all straight out of the 30s, which they are. Our last holiday as young children was in August 1939 at Llandudno. Here we're busy trying to rearrange the beach. We're digging channels frantically in the sand to get water to flow along them as the tide comes in. And this is us later, 
watching the Punch and Judy show on the beach. Fifty years on, my parents told me that they cut the holiday short and returned home early when it became increasingly obvious that war was only a few days away. Victory Day, June the 8th, 1946, was a national holiday to celebrate the end of the war. Street parties like this one were held in just about every town and village in the country. Later in life, a few of them went on to greater things. Food rationing continued long after the war ended and people only just got enough food to eat. So it's amazing how they conjured up this impressive spread of sandwiches and cakes, jellies and biscuits. And here are all the mums and dads who did it. <laughs> 